Hello and welcome once again to the hard Brexit scenario on Football Manager 2020 where the UK has left UEFA and left to fend for itself and well we're on to season two it's season two everyone we've been through season one we know that man city won the brexit champions league and then we've gone through euro 2020 with france taking the title there so it's time for a season preview kinda we're gonna have a look at the brexit champions league groups in fact they've already had one game so we'll see what happened there and uh, we've uh, and then we'll see who's been splashing the cash uh, and see what big signings have happened across the English League all 40 divisions with 40 teams are winning 80 million pounds last season and the runners up will get 50 and stuff like that and um, before we start this one hasn't actually gone through yet but this one looks like a great like a great 80 million pound uh, I've got I've suddenly got 80 million pounds let's spend it type of deal with Norwich putting in an offer of 6.75 million for David Luiz from Arsenal that that is the kind of stuff I want on this um, but more of that later we're gonna go to see the draws for the big tournaments or I say big tournaments the Brexit Champions League no. mm, there it is so let's scroll all the way down and see the draws for the free European competitions oh well equivalent of the European competitions when it loads right so season two of the brexit champions league only one manchester team will be in it this team this time because uh gibraltar have winners this time and let's have a look at those groups so group a dunfermline man U, murford town uh shrewsbury and blues from antarctica group b watford colrain kilmarnock nelson's island and yeovil group c Spurs, Bellina Malag United, Greenock Morton, Penlincock, the Comeback Kings, and Oxford United. While in Group D, Crow Alexandra, Norwich City, Uino Island, Peterborough United, and Bangor City. In Group E, Colchester United, Bristol City, Cardiff City, Husvik, and PHC Zebras. While in Group F, Liverpool, they've got Ross County, Swindon Town, Tweedmouth, and Guernsey. Group G, Reading, Gillingham, Glenavon, Ramsey and Plymouth. While in Group H, Luton Town, Lincoln City, Nottingham Forest, FC Lakers and Vale of Leven. Group I, Bournemouth, Motherwell, Newport County, Newtown and Glentoran. Only one English team in that one. Quite surprising, but not that surprising to be fair. In Group J, Wolves. They won the West Midlands League and now their prize is matches against Hereford, Northampton, Swansea City and Roaring Lions of Anguilla. In Group K, Aberdeen, Newcastle. That'd be an interesting tie. They've got Woking, Truro and Elite from the Cayman Islands. While in Group L, Brighton, Falkirk, Stratford, the Giant Killers, Full Physic and Blackburn Rovers. Group M, Leeds, Ipswich, House Bashers. They didn't get one of the big teams, unfortunately, but Leeds and Ipswich, they're, they're decent size. And they've also got Europa FC, the first Gibraltar entrance in the competition, and Kidderminster Harriers. While in Group N, Ballymena United, Leicester City, Hartlepool United, Rangers and Jersey Bulls. Group O, St Johnston, Queen of the South, Stoke City, Newry City and the Sugar Boys. While in Group P, Hibs, Southampton, Dungannon, Wickham Wanderers and Cape Zevgari. And finally Group Q, Derby County, Dundee United, FC St John's, Wrexham and Carlisle. So those are the groups for the Brexit Champions League. And as you can see we've already had the first match. Let's see if there were any interesting results there. Any massive ones? Dunfermline, oh no, St Johnston beat the Sugar Boys. While we had Man U beating Shrewsbury 2 0, goals from Pogba and Lingard. Watford beat Yeovil, Spurs beat Oxford 2 0. Jared Bowen, who's joined Spurs from Hull in there, Dele, Dele Alli scoring the other goal. And Liverpool beating Guernsey 5 0. Shea Yojo even getting on the score sheet there. And Jordan Shakiri got a game. That's, that's impressive. Reading beating Port Plymouth uh, there. Four 0 win for Luton. Six 0 Bournemouth beat Glen Torren. Uh, even even Solanke scored there. Uh, Wolves beat Roaring Lions five 0 So the Wolves beat the Lions. Nice. There there's an interesting result. Woking won. Newcastle won. 
So Newcastle already dropping points. Uh, while uh, Leeds beating Kidderminster. Uh, Leicester beat Rangers 2-0. That's a good result for them, I'd say. Hibbs beating Cape Zevgari 6-0. Canberra with four goals. And there, there's your, so there are your opening uh, results in the Brexit Champions League. We'll have a quick look at the Empire League. Uh, in their draw. So Group A, Nuneaton, Chesterfield, Portsmouth, Manzur and Aberystwyth. Group B, Villa, Kettering, Crawley, Poulton and Fire FC. Group C, Arsenal with Blythe Spartans, Exeter City, Scholars and Episcopi. Group D, Manchester City, they've got Ebbsfleet, Douglas Royal, Maidenhead United and Swindon Supermarine. Group E, Southend, Stranraer. Air, Barry and Henderson Island. Group F, Cambridge, Hamilton, Ards, Godolphin and Ruffin. Group G, Mansfield, MK Dons, Institute, Barton Rovers and Danger Island. Group H, Colville, Kings Lynn, Scunthorpe, Dundee United and SWA Sharks. Group I, Wraith, Undy, St Mirren, Central Islands and TNS. While in Group J, Peterhead, Huddersfield, Alara Athletic, Clanleda and Dergview. Group K, Burnley, Leiston, Macclesfield, Westfields and Rovers, Group L, Sunderland, Stevenage, Darlington, Police from Montserrat and Kinnall, Group M, Heart of Midlovian, Dorchester, Forest Green, Alverchurch and Lisbelor United, Group N, Barrow, Barla, Port Talbot, Celtic and St Owen, while in Group O, Everton, North Village Rams, Portadown, Aberdare and St Joseph's of Gibraltar. Group P, Linfield, Staines, Burton, Tame and Greens. While finally in Group Q, Panthers, Larn, Inverness, Caledonia, Fissel, Gala, Ferry, Dean Rovers and Kicks United. So there's the groups in the Empire League. They've also drawn the Cup Winners' Cup, uh, which obviously will be played in between the tournaments. If I was to have a look at the draw there. So Group A, AEL, HCS, Spartans, Celtic, PHC, Zebras and Scholars. Group B, Europa. FC, Hereford, Manchester City and Sark, Group C, Ballymena United, Sugar Boys, SWA Sharks and Swansea. If I was to hazard a guess at what I reckon the final will be, I would say Man City Celtic or Man City Swansea. So, you know, the two, the two obvious choices for what the final will be. Can Man City retain the Cup Winners' Cup? Now, also, we've had the draws for the European competitions. Don't, don't want to sell them short. They've happened too. We'll only pick out the big the big teams in this one, go through the whole thing because it's the qualifying rounds with them. And uh, Zebra or Juventus are the, are the holders there. And did they qualify again? I imagine they probably did. Uh, so we have uh, the big teams. Barcelona, they've been drawn against Sant Julia of Andorra. Remember, only, you just have to win to make the Champions League. There's 32 matches here. Uh, Real San Sebastian or Real Sociedad, they've got Mikhailovce of Slovakia. Inter Milan play Astana of Kazakhstan. That's a, that's a decent tie because Astana aren't that bad. Monaco play Sabatalo. We've also got Rosenborg Napoli, that's a decent tie. Uh, Karabag v Benfica. Baal v. Ajax, that is uh, probably the, possibly one of the harder ties of the round. Borussia, Munch, uh, Borussia Dortmund sorry, against Lechia of Poland. And we also have PSV v Real Madrid. No, that is the hardest tie of the round, <laughs> just looking at it. Another hard one, but not quite as hard as that one, would be FC Copenhagen v Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, plus Leon v Xiri United of Malta. Porto v Athletic Bilbao, that's another hard one, and Levski v Galatasaray. So there's uh, some difficult ties there, and the winners of each of those will qualify for the Champions League. In the Euro Cup they have two rounds of qualifying, and they've actually already started because they have two rounds of qualifying. If we take a look at what the big ties there are, uh, just a quick flick through. Wolfsburg of Austria losing 4-0 to Rio, are they? Freiburg of Germany, they're playing Sarpsborg and winning. Lazio play, play TSC of uh, or TSC Bakatopola of Serbia. While we also have just scrolling down, see if there's anyone we anyone big in there. Bordeaux playing uh, Svintul Jorga of uh, Moldova. Never actually heard of them. AC Milan playing FCSB. That's a tie. Uh, so st the former Stoya Bucharest, 
uh, had to change their name in, in, due to a legal dispute, I believe. And then, not too many of the big teams, or maybe they're just all at the bottom of the draw. Olympiakos v Mitterland, I'd say that's that's a decent tie. We also have Roma, the holders of the competition. They're playing Vents Bills. Oh, I forgot to mention Shakhtar v Young Boys. Lil v RZ Alkmaar. Feders of Liechtenstein. Hoping they go through. I just like them. Uh, Schalke v Sporting Lisbon. There, that's that's another hard tie. Unfortunately, uh, because I'm crap at editing, we couldn't get seeds on this. But that's all right. Makes it a bit more interesting, doesn't it? Plus, it's the it's is the uh, Brexit scenario. It's not the European scenario, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, we've also got Fenerbahce playing Nefci. Uh, Utrecht v Bilavante as well. That's not that's an interesting tie. Bajiktas v Progress, the former conquerors of Rangers in Scotland. Sevilla v AEK, Bayer Leverkusen v Apollon Limassol. And that's that's it for the big ties, I'd say. And we can also see the Euro Cup 2, or the Europa Conference, they call it what you will. Uh, that uh, won't have too many big ties because it's uh, there's only one team from the big countries in this one. All the, the smaller countries get two in these in this competition. Anderlecht v Valour of Iceland. Uh, Espanyol playing Una Strassen of Luxembourg. Uh, we also have Fiorentina playing Titan Ar Armyansk of Crimea, uh, who are there to make up the numbers. Vitesse v Nantes, so one of those teams will be dropping out. And am I missing a, a, a team? Because uh, German, the German team, there we go, Werder Bremen v Brann of Norway so one of those teams will be out and only one of those uh, only one round of qualifying there so all those winners go through to the 32 team group stage so we've gotten through those uh, let's uh, now see as promised those transfers and see who's been spending big in the English league with that big money that they got as prize money who has been uh, doing it? oh apparently the uh, Bedfordshire league's begun already with one game Stockfold against Amp Hill. Exciting. So, transfers. The big signing in Bedfordshire. Luton spending 5.75 million. Could, le could uh, become 7.5 million for Baba Rahman of Chelsea. They've also they've been splashing a bit of the cash. They also bought Brandon Barker from Rangers for 4.6 million. And Daniel Barlasser from Newcastle for 2.6 million. So, oh, and... Connor Roberts, but that's not too much. The high, the biggest spenders other than Luton are Wooten, who bought Aaron Jackson from Wisbeach for 14.25k. So, not not too much big spending going on there, apart from Luton, who are just buying a new squad apparently. Well, they did sell Elliot Lee, and he's a decent player. And Marek Steck, who is a goalkeeper, I believe. Is he? Gonna have to check this now. Are you a goalkeeper? He is a goalkeeper. Right. Uh, in Berkshire, Reading, they have been on the spend as well, uh, but also they've been selling a few too, looking at every every single deal in this top part of it are all involving Reading. So they've bought uh, Ben Pearson from Preston for 5.75 million, Jamalou Collins from Paderborn for 3.2 million, Ove Ajaria from Liverpool for 3 million, Danilo Pantic from Chelsea for 1.4, they have been spending the uh, who are the uh, Slough are the team that have uh, spent the most other than Reading 4.450,000 for Rico Hackett of Bromley and we can move down now to Bristol and Gloucestershire Coventry uh, oh no no the biggest signing was actually for Barry Douglas of Br to Bristol City from Leeds for 4.1 but the biggest deal was to sell sell to Coventry from Bristol City 6.25 million also, Bristol Rovers have been spending a bit of money too on a couple of players. And uh, Brislington, 140,000. And that's the biggest for uh, outside of those. So, not too much happening there. We're hoping someone's going to be spending some money. Oh, and speak of the devil Adam May of Portsmouth transferred two Wickham Wanderers for 19.5 million. Could go up to 24 million. Now, that 
that is the kind of transfers we're looking for on this here with Wickham spending all that cash they won in the last season MK Dons also spending a bit Peter Herring for 4.7 million from Hearts in fact those two have just been buying up new squads just like uh, in the other one Burnham are the uh, highest spending other team 57,000 for Aaron Gilpin from Colne in Cambridgeshire Peterborough have lost a bunch of players Mark Beavers, Nathan Thompson and George Cooper uh, for the big money the biggest signing they've made themselves 975,000 for Matthew Pennington from Everton so uh, not too much spending happening in Cambridgeshire Cambridge haven't, aren't even the next biggest spenders no next is Peterborough North Star 170,000 for Donovan Wilson from Burgos and then it's Histon so Cambridge have only got the fourth highest transfer in the Cambridgeshire Premier League and Premier Division. Got where you are. Cheshire. <coughs> uh, Runcorn have sold a player in in Cheshire for 14.75 million to Derby. So that's a that's a good deal for for Runcorn. So they've got whatever they won last season plus that that transfer money. That's not too bad. Crew have signed up a whole new squad with Ick Piazzo, Lavelle, Morosi, Leonard, and Steele all coming in, and Albaldine Goodridge uh, for a decent bit of money there. And uh, Northwich have also bought someone for 21.5k, but that's not enough to shout about. Cornwall, I'll be interested to see what the highest transfer is here because no one, there's no actual real life league teams in this one. Truro, the biggest spending team, 55,000, so not what we're looking for. Connor McKendry, you're the highest transfer in Cornwall, and you're, own, you're not even a um, hundred thousand. Ah, well, now hopefully they'll spend some money in the next season or during the season. We've still got a month for the transfer window, in fact, so you never know. In Cumbria, JJ Donnelly joining Whitehaven for 250,000 is the biggest transfer there. Well, that's disappointing. Carlisle, their biggest transfer is only 87,000. What's going on? They've given you all this money and no one's spending it. Derbyshire. There's there's what we want. 17 million Derby have spent on Kenneth Taylor of Ajax. They also spent 14.75 on Gareth Grant from Runcorn. We knew about that one though because that one was in the Cheshire one. And they bought Yannick Balassi for 4.5 million. So Derby have been waving their wad. Chesterfield also spending a bit 525,000 for Linford Sackey from Reading. Uh, and South Normanton have uh, spent a tiny bit. Not, not enough to care about though. In Devon, Plymouth forgot the two big transfers. One from Peterborough for 6.25 million, Mark Beavers. Plus, they've bought Sam Cosgrove from Watford for 3.7 million, um, while also losing a player. The Nick, there isn't really much else happening there. Torquay have got the next biggest transfer of 150,000, so not too much to chat about other than that. In Dorset, Bournemouth. They are splashing the cash and losing players. Andre Gray has joined from Watford and Marco Gruhich from Liverpool for 14.75 million and 12.25 million respectively. But they have lost Josh King to West Brom, plus Mikel Nunjoli, Nemandi Offerbor, and Alex Dobre uh, in for a bit of cash. Oh, 11.75 million for for Josh King. The others haven't really gone for that much. And Paul will have the next highest transfer that doesn't involve Bournemouth. 47,000 for Adam Coombs. On to Durham. And the biggest transfer there is for Stockton. £325,000. Not enough for me to care. But it is for Kevin Kalala. I like his name. So not too bad. And Darlington have bought one of Stratford's players. James Hancock's. Could that be one of the players that that gave them that title win last season is it are they on the down now who knows Essex George Forrest is the biggest transfer there 275,000 from Crawley to Chelmsford uh, so the two the two or three big teams there Southend, Braintree and Colchester are the next biggest transfers and they haven't spent too much although Southend have bought a player from City for 66,000 so he, they might be doing well next season if they uh, if he's as good as the rest of the Mid City youth players, you never know. This one should be interesting, Greater London. Uh, so you've got three of the top teams in the country here, and the biggest transfer out 
is for Chelsea. Alvaro Morata, I thought we'd already left, if I'm honest. At 47.5 million, he's gone to Atletico Madrid. But the biggest signing into London, 39.5 million Spurs have signed Benjamin Mendy. Uh, so that's the left back for City. The right back, Kyle Walker, has gone to Arsenal, which is a controversial move, seeing as he used to play for Spurs. 31 million he's gone for. Arsenal have also signed Christian Teo from Real Betis for 25 million. Uh, Drinkwater's left. We'll talk about him later when we go to Norfolk. Mario Balotelli's joined Spurs for 20 million. Lamella's left for Krasnodar for 19.75 million. Jared Bowen, we knew about him because he scored in the Brexit Champions League. Uh, ben Davies is left for Brighton. And we've also got Ionat Radu has joined Chelsea for 17.75 million. Cechi Kaya has left Palace. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one later. I imagine that's one, one of the biggest transfers in that county. Kyle Walker Peters has gone. Jack Cooper has gone. These are all players leaving London. We've got ah, Rish, Rashid Gazelle has joined Fulham for 7 million. And we also have Evelio Cardozo joining Chelsea for 5.25 million from Racing Club. Snodgrass has left. Any other big transfers? Now that, those are all the ones that are over a million. So some decent, some decent signings in London. While in Manchester, the, I'd say the biggest transfer I can I imagine we've got so far, Lorenzo Pellegrini, who scored in the uh, scored a wonder goal in the semis of the Euro of Euro 2020. If you remember for Italy, he's left Roma to join Man City for 89 million pounds. That's a, that's a lot of money. Chris Smalling has left Manchester United for Inter Milan. Apparently he liked Italy in that loan move. So he's gone for 15.25 million. And uh, Lucas Nemitscher has left Man City for 9 million to go to Munch and Gladbach. Rochdale are the highest other team and they spent 6 million, which is good for Rochdale, I'd say, on Stephen Walker from Middlesbrough. While Snodgrass has signed for Wigan from West Ham for 2.9. Paolo Fernandez has left Man City. I don't know these Man City players. <laughs> so the Man City youth team have basically all left uh, to go get some first team action elsewhere. So moving away from the big money, let's go to Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Oh, sorry, did I say moving away from the big money? Nathan Redmond has, le Redmond has left Southampton for AC Milan for £85 million. That is insane money for Nathan Redmond. While... AC Milan have also bought Yannick Vestergaard from Southampton for 32.5 million. So uh, instead of selling all their players to Liverpool, they're doing it to AC Milan now. And um, what's the biggest signing into the league? Michael Jacobs from Wigan to Southampton for 11.25 million. Could rise to 14.25 million. Plus uh, Kevin Danso from Augsburg for 9.25 million, also to Southampton. The next biggest transfer in is Shane Lavery from Linfield to Eastleigh for 135,000. Bit big jump down there. Herefordshire, so another one that doesn't have any league teams, and it shows with the biggest transfer being Mikey Yome from Southport to Hereford for 43.5 million, 43.5 thousand. What am I saying? Hereford aren't spending that much just yet. It's early though. In Hertfordshire. The biggest signing is 15.5 million for Man City's William Troost Ekong to Watford. Never heard of him, but 15.5 million must be decent enough for Watford. They've also signed El Sayed Haisaj for 13.25 million from Napoli. Uh, while they've also sold a couple of players like uh, Gray and Success, they've signed another Man City youth player in Zach Steffen. Uh, in fact, they've, they've had every single deal in that top half or dot top part are involving Watford the next the deep, biggest deal outside of Watford is Jack Nolan 1.4 million Stevenage have paid for for paid rating yeah and then it's some more Watford stuff so if we just scroll back up there and we move over to Kent uh, Gillingham with the biggest transfer there Sammy Schmodix from Bristol City for 625,000 keep keep trying to say 6.25 thousand but it doesn't work like that does it and uh, so not too much money being spent in Kent while in Lancashire 
the biggest signing in Lancashire. 35.5 million. This is that kind of stuff I like. Nathan Broadhead from Preston, well, from Everton to Preston for 35.5 million. Plus Fleetwood have spent 21.5 million on Elliot Embleton from Sunderland. This is crazy money. Plus Blackburn have spent 17.5 million, 10 million, and 7 million on Cheku Kuati, Isaac Success, and Roman Sace, respectively. Crazy money in Lancashire. Plus, they've signed uh, Jack Price from Colorado for 4.9 million, and Fleetwood another 850,000 on Jordan Marshall from Dundee. Good money going about in Lancashire, Leicestershire, and they have been a selling club this window, uh, dropping Islam Slavani, Rashid Gazelle, Mark Albrighton, and Bartosz Kapushka, uh, which isn't really much of a loss. Those aren't first team players apart from Mark Albrighton, who is isn't exactly first team anymore. Uh, They've made a fair bit of money from them and then spent 1.5 million on Leonardo Nieves. Uh, the biggest signing outside of Leicester is, Jake, uh, is Jack Jeb from, for Colville for 34.5 million from Welling. Lincolnshire. Uh, Lincoln, 12.25 million. Connor Chaplin's joined from Barnsley. And 12 million to Almeria to Arvin Appiah, great money going about, and 6 million to Peterborough for Nathan Thompson, 1.4, Lincoln have bought half a squad, and I love it, uh, and uh, Grimsby, 125,000 for the biggest deal outside of Lincoln, for Herbert Bockhorn, Merseyside, how much have Liverpool spent, they're not, they are the biggest spenders in Merseyside, but it's not that that big, only 18.75 million for Liverpool. I suppose they don't need to buy too much. They did. They, uh, it's pretty easy to win the Merseyside League. Uh, Yosef Atal from Nice is their big signing. The next biggest one outside of them is uh, we've got to, got, to, got to travel a bit far because Everton have spent, sold so many players. Broadhead, Bowler, Tosun, Balassi, Walcott's gone to Sheffield United. We'll, we'll see more about that one later. And Mo Besic to. Uh, Al Shabab in Saudi Arabia. So Tranmere have actually got the next biggest signing. Mitch Clark from Leicester, 475,000. Everton's biggest signing. Tigran Gazarian from Matlock for 73,000. Oh dear. In Norfolk. I'll scroll up for those Norwich signings. Norwich have signed Danny Rinkwater from Chelsea for 22.5 million. Uh, and sold a few players as well. Hernandez, Dermic, Morris and Power. Uh, Hernandez and Dermic are probably decent players for them, so probably uh, not good for them to sell them, but in in the long run, they're not going to have too much trouble retaining the, tra the the tournament, I don't believe anyway. Bigger signing other than them is Ryan Gondo from Carl Shorten to Kingsland for 160000 Northamptonshire. Northampton have signed Liam McCarron from Leeds for £6.25 million. Good money. Uh, and then not much else is happening. Try and breeze through the next ones. Northumberland. Blythe have bought a load of players, but nothing over, nothing over five hundred thousand. The biggest one's four hundred twenty-five thousand. Uh, so we'll breeze past that one. Nottinghamshire. The biggest signing is actually Mansfield with three hundred thousand for Connor Randall from Arda. Um, have Forest even bought a player? Doesn't. None of the big money. No, no big money. There's only one transfer over twenty-five thousand. In Oxfordshire, 1.75 million. In fact, those those are transfers out. Uh, the biggest signing in, 275,000. This this is disappointing from Nottinghamshire and Oxfordshire. These ones, I'm hoping Shropshire can uh, Shrop Shropshire, sorry, can uh, impress me. Oh yes, they can. Shrewsbury have signed Corey Roberts from Walsall for 11.5 million. Park Exchange and 3.4 million for Mads Anderson from Barnsley. Good signings from. Uh, Shrewsbury, AFC, Telford have also spent a bit of cash for Owen James from Oxford, 1.75 million. TNS uh, spending a bit too, 1.2 million and 650,000 for Harvey St Clair and Tafari Moore, respectively. Somerset, Yeovil, bit well, the biggest signing into Somerset is 47,000, so nothing to write home about there. Staffordshire. Stoke have spent 9.75 million on O'Neill Hernandez from Norwich, as we already know. Next biggest sign is 1.4 million for Charlie Colquitt to go from Ostersons to Port Vale. And Burton's biggest one is 325,000. Suffolk. 
Luke Amos has signed for Ipswich from Spurs for 4.3 million and then Mark Minolti's gone from Reading to Ipswich for 700,000 those are the big deals 42,000 is the biggest one outside of Ipswich Carolyn Scullion from Redditch to Lowestoft in Surrey Woking they've only spent 51,000 for the biggest deal so nothing massive in Surrey Sussex Brighton spent 18.5 million on Ben Davies from Spurs and 14.5 million on Hector Herrera from Atletico Madrid. What a deal there. Uh, and they've also sold Robert Sanchez and Jason Steele, so no one, no one too special. The biggest signing outside of Brighton is AFC Uckfield Town spending 49,000 on Jack Strange from Hampton and Richmond Borough. Tynan Ware. How much have Newcastle spent? 26 million on Odson Edouard. While they've also spent 16.5 million on Kyle Walker Peters from Spurs. While also letting go DeAndre Led Yedlin and Daniel Barlasser to Leeds and Luton, respectively. Uh, Sunderland's biggest deal Lawrence de Bock from Leeds for 1 million. So only Newcastle spending big in tiny wear. In Warwickshire, have Stratford spent big money? They have for Stratford anyway. 1.6 million on Ben Forrest from Birmingham. Uh, Lemington have spent 400k on Corey Henry from Bromley. Uh, and then uh, nothing yet. Nuneaton needs to spend big if they're going to catch up with Stratford. Big money Stratford. In the West Midlands, Wolves have spent 27.5 million on Nicholas Dominguez from Bologna. Uh, while Aston Villa 14.5 million for Jake Cooper from Millwall. West Brom, 13.5 million for Southampton's Stuart Armstrong. And Aston Villa also spent 13.25 million on Gabriel Barbosa from Inter Milan. So there's been some good money being spent in the West Midlands. West Brom, 11.75 million for Joshua King. We knew about that one. Uh, while Wolves have sold a couple of players, even Cavallero and Roman Sais. Coventry, 6.25 million for Jamie Patterson. We knew about that one. Uh, Birmingham have lost Ben Forrest, Jack Mogoma, and Gary Gardner to Stratford, Vancouver, and Lincoln, respectively. Uh, and the uh, biggest transfer outside of the big ones, Warsaw, 120,000 on Ash Taylor from Aberdeen. Just three more divisions now. Wiltshire, 5.75 million is the big money for Swindon. Uh, they spent that on George Cooper from Peterborough. They've also bought a Man City youth player, a couple of Man City youth players, in, in fact. Uh, so there's been a lot of Man City youth players going out on permanent deals. So they must be losing, they must wanting to lose these players. Apparently they're probably not worth what Man City are pay were paying them anyway. Worcestershire. Have Kidderminster spent big at all? For president, there we go. Uh, they have not. 210,000 is the most they've spent on Jarvis Edibor of from Dulwich Hamlet. They've also sold uh, Harry Higginson to Folkestone for 245,000. Uh, they've also bought Ken, but no, not that big of money. Finally, Yorkshire. Have they been spending big in Yorkshire? I'm hoping so. Give us something good to end on. Leeds, Mano Solomon from Shakhtar Donetsk for 17.5 million. They've also bought Helda Costa from Wolves for 15 million. Boli Bolingoli from Celtic for 12.75 million. Alfie Mawson from Fulham for 11.75 million. DeAndre Yedlin for 10.5 million or 10.75 million. Adam Messina from Watford. Oh, they have been spending big. Uh, I suppose they have lost Ezgan Alioski. Uh, but still, that is some big money spent by the champions. Uh, Huddersfield have also been splashing a bit of cash on Victor Moses, Mark Albrighton and Ken Seema. Uh, while uh, Hull's big signing, Josh Bowler from Everton, 5 million. Sheffield Wednesday have taken Elliot Lee from Luton for 4.8 million. And any more? Leeds have bought more players. Gustavo Gomez from AC Milan, Anthony, McDonald from, Anthony McDonald from Hearts, Ilian Meslia from Lorient. They literally bought a whole first 11. Theo Walcott's joined Sheffield United for 3.8. Forgot to mention that one. And Kiko Kissi has gone to Krasnodar for 3.2 million. Uh, Middlesbrough, Bartosz Kapushka for 2.8 million. Eric Peters has gone from Burnley to Sheffield Wednesday for 1.9 million. Jackson Irvine's left Hull for Holland for Orlando City, 1.6. But they've signed Thomas Agupon from Man City. And 
that's that's everything over a million there's so many transfers in in yorkshire and i think that'll do it because well just so transferred out so next time we'll uh, go up to we'll go a month in see how everything started see how the cup draws are and uh we'll probably be about four games in in the brexit champions league too so we can see how that is and the normal the uefa champions league will have probably been drawn by then as well so let's see how it in how it is then but until then rock on like and subscribe